Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Today in this video, we're going to start discuss the methods of psychology. In the previous method, we discussed the scientific methods in the methods of psychology. And today in this video, we will discuss the descriptive methods in which we will discuss observation and there are two types of observation that is naturalistic observation and laboratory observation and what is descriptive method this uh, it is actually the scientific procedures that involve systematically observing behavior in order to describe the relationship among the behavior and emits or you can say descriptive methods are the research methods used to observe and describe behavior so descriptive methods are the research strategies for observing and describing behavior using descriptive methods researchers can answer important questions such as when certain behavior take place how often they occur and whether they are related to other factors such as person's age ethnic group or educational level so in this video you will see descriptive methods can provide a wealth of information about behavior especially behavior that would be difficult or impossible to study experimentally so let's come to naturalistic observation which is a type of descriptive method uh, before moving towards the naturalistic observation and discussing it deeply, I will just give you meanings or definitions of some important terms which we will use during our lecture. Descriptive method, the definition of naturalistic observation is the systematic observation and recording of behavior as they occur in their natural setting. An observer's effect is the tendency of people or animals to behave differently from normal when they know they are being observed. And a participant observation is a naturalistic observation in which the observer becomes a participant in the group being observed. And the tendency of observer to see what they expect to see is observer's bias. Naturalistic observation or naturalistic observation. So when psychologists systematically observe and record behavior they, that they occur in their natural setting, they are using the descriptive method called naturalistic observation. Usually researchers engage in naturalistic observation try to avoid being detected by their subjects whether people are non-human animals the basic goal of naturalistic observation is to detect the behavior patterns that exist naturally so patterns that might not be uh, apparent in a laboratory or if the subject knew they were being watched so um, sometimes all researchers need to know is what is happening to a group of animals or people. So the best way to look at behavior of animal or people is to watch them behavior in their natural environment. With uh, people, researchers might want to observe them in their workplaces, homes or on playgrounds. Uh, so often the observers need to remain hidden from view when researching human this is often a difficult thing to do. A researcher might find that pretending to read a book is a good disguise, especially one wearing uh, sunglasses or uh, black glasses to hide the movement of eyes. So in other cases, researchers might use one-way mirrors or they might actually become participant in a group uh, which is called participant observation. Uh, as you might expect psychologists very carefully define the behavior that will observe and measure before they begin their research. For example, social psychologist Robert Levin in 1997 and 1999 set out to compare the pace of life in 31 different countries. So how could you operationally define the pace of life? One measure that Levin adopted was the amount of time it took a pedestrian to walk a distance of 60 feet on a downtown uh, city street. To collect the data, observers unobstructively timed at least 35 male and 35 female pedestrians in each country. So the results, the fastest, fastest walkers were uh, clocked in Ireland and the slowest in Brazil. So when the 31st uh, 31 uh, countries were ranked from fastest to slowest. The United, Stam, uh, United States uh, came in sixth and Canada ranked uh, 11th. So as uh, we have discussed, everything have advantages as well as 
disadvantages. So one advantage of naturalistic observation is that it allows researchers to study human behavior that cannot ethically be manipulated in an experiment. Uh, it allows um, researchers to get the realistic picture of how behavior occurs because they are actually watching that behavior. For example, suppose that psychologists want to study bullying behavior in children. It would not be ethical to deliberately collect a situation in which one child is aggressively bullied by another child. So, however, it would uh, be ethical to study bullying by observing aggressive behavior in children on a crowded school playground. Same is the case with psychologists Deborah Papler and Wendy Craig. In 1995, did just that. From their vantage point on the second floor of a school, they used a camcorder with a uh, telephoto lens and small uh, wireless microphones to observe the spontaneous interactions of school children. Using this uh, naturalistic observation strategy, they discovered that physical and verbal aggression incident, uh, incidents are far from rare, even among children who a uh, home teacher regarded as non-aggressive instances of physical aggression occurred about once every 11, uh, 11 minutes and verbal aggression about once every 5 minutes. And contrary to what many people assume, Papler and Craig found that girls bully other children at the same rate as mm, the boys do. So everything have advantages as well as disadvantages. So the disadvantage of naturalistic observation is the observer's effect, uh, the possibility of observers biased and blind observer. Other uh, the observer that are made in one time in one setting may not hold true for another time, even if the setting is similar, because the conditions are not going to be. Uh, same time after time or all the time. Uh, as we have discussed that observer effect is the tendency of people or animal to behave differently from normal when they know they are being observed. And observer bias is tendency of observers to see what they expect to see. And blind observer is actually, uh, uh, it is sometimes that a uh, person only sees those actions that support the expectation and ignores uh, actions that don't fit, uh, which will be a type of uh, observer bias. And a blind observer will, will be, uh, actually these are the kind of people who do not know what the research question is and therefore have no uh, pro-convinced notions about what they should do. So it's a good idea to have more than one observer so that the various observations can be compared. Uh, for example, uh, famed gorilla research Dean Fossey had to battle poachers who set traps for the animals in the area of observations. The presence and activities of the poachers affected the normal behavior of gorilla she was trying to observe. Let's come to laboratory observation. Laboratory observation is actually um, laboratory observation as opposed to naturalistic observation refers to the observing behavior of subjects that are in a controlled environment. Sometimes uh, observing, uh, in, um, observing behavior in animal or people is just not practical in a natural setting. For example, a researcher might want to observe the re reaction of animal to a mirror image of themselves and record the reactions with a camera mounted behind the one-way mirror. So the kind of equipment might be difficult to set up in a natural setting. And a laboratory observation, the researchers would bring the animal to the equipment, controlling the type of animal, the number of animals, and everything else that goes on in the laboratory. Uh, laboratory setting has a disadvantage of being an artificial situation that might result in artificial behavior. Animals and people often react differently in laboratory than they would uh, behave in the real world. So the main advantage of this method is the degree of control that it gives to the observer. So this was the end of the video. If you like the video, if you have got the point and your concept is clear, you can like the video. And if not, you can tell us in the comment what were the points which you didn't get and we will try our best to clear your concept. 
and you can subscribe to our channel so you can stay updated you can stay notified for the upcoming videos and you can share this video with your friends with other people so they can also get the benefit from uh, this knowledge based video because sharing is caring uh, until then Allah Hafiz